Welcome everybody. It's John again. It's time for a general market update. It's uh, July 16th, 2022. As a reminder, this presentation is by Rain King LLC and I'm an amateur growth stock investor and I'm not affiliated with IBD or Market Smith. So the agenda for this update is to very briefly go over the current market. Um, I wanna share a hack of how to uh, fairly quickly to analyze bases on weekly charts. And then I wanna spend uh, the most of the time today on watch list and how to break down some stocks that might want to be prioritized on your watch list. So the current market, um, starting with the big picture as always, um, we, we've shown this chart, monthly chart. We know that the, uh, the market could come back down into this zone between 10,000 and 11,000. It's come down once uh, and still be in the kind of super cycle premise. Here's a daily chart of the NASDAQ. And we had, you know, follow through day number five, which didn't, has not gone very far. Um, it ran into resistance once at the 50 day moving average. Um, this past week with the CPI number being released, um, the market actually held um, on really what would be appear to be bad news with inflation still over nine. Um, the market tried to rally and it's coming back into the 50 day again. Um, we'll have to see how this goes, but technically speaking, follow through day number five is still alive until we break that low, uh, which is shown in the dotted line. Talked about this before, just a reminder, big round numbers um, can be psychological tops and bottoms in the market. Um, I've marked the 10,000 area as one of those types of numbers, ironically, it was the market top back in uh, February of 2020. Um, you can see here on the chart, and uh, it's still possible that we'll come down to the 10,000 level if the market breaks. Um, and we'll have to look at that carefully as to see if it shows support. Bear markets on the, some of the psychology side, we talked about you know what happens in psychology wise on leg one. Uh, we've talked about leg two. Um, you know, we're at a very interesting juncture right here. The market is kind of at a crossroads. Um, you know, we, again, on the positive side, we had bad news this week with the CPI number, but the market reacted okay. It held. At least for the time being, it started to absorb that bad news and not go down further. So that's noteworthy. We know we have the, uh, the Fed meeting. I believe it's July 27th. Uh, most likely we're going to get a 1% hike. Uh, but we'll have to see how it plays out and how the market reacts to that. Um, if the market doesn't react well and we break that low I showed on the previous chart, um, we could get the beginning of legs three down in the market. And uh, the psychology at that point would be if the next rally fails, it would be very obvious to everyone that the market has failed. Um, and it could result in a very rapid break and a rapid decline. And maybe we do see some sort of capitulation, um, people just selling everything and, and really, really down on the bad news. Um, or maybe the market holds. You know, this blue line is showing that maybe the market is making its bottom, a grinding bottom where it might go sideways with a slightly upward tilt, um, which could take us for a few months, maybe into the fall. So we'll have to see how it plays out. But I do think the market's at a pretty important juncture here. Um, it's taking time to see how the market's going to go. So let's move to um, the next topic, which is analyzing uh, bases. I know that people, um, you know, some people are pressed for time. It takes time to analyze bases properly. Um, and you want to look at the weekly charts and you want to look at daily charts. And uh, I'm going to give you um, really a hack to try and save you time that you might consider using. So the hack is really looking at the three most important weeks on a weekly chart in the base. And this hack will is designed to try and understand quickly, is the stock under accumulation or under distribution? So the three things that we're gonna look at are, we wanna look at the week that has the largest weekly spread, the largest range, we also wanna look at the week in the base with the biggest volume. 
and we want to look at the weeks around the bottom of the base. And the fourth thing you could look at is um, as we come off the bottom, the first three weeks off the bottom, and very quickly you can say, what are they telling you? Are they giving you positive signs of accumulation or negative signs that the base is still under distributions by institutions? So let's look at a few examples. Here's Weibo from 2016. So putting this through the three tests, um, again, the largest spread week, number one, I've marked it on the chart. You can see that that largest spread week was a blue week and it had a peak close. That's a positive. The next week was the biggest volume week in the base. And you can see the biggest volume week in the base, I've marked it, is um, a blue week. It's on the right side of the base and another peak close, another positive. The third is the week's at the bottom of the base. So you'll notice that the, the weeks I've marked on the bottom, we have this down week and then we have a reversal at the bottom of the base. And you can see this really, really big um, move in the, in the stock. So those are really telling you that the stock is generally really quickly telling you it's under accumulation. Um, you still need to do your detailed analysis, but this quickly tells you if it should remain on your watch list. And actually, you know, Weibo went on in 2016 to have a very big run. Here's another one. This is NVIDIA in 2018. This was near um, kind of the top, getting close to the top in NVIDIA's stock, but it formed a flat base. So how would you analyze this base really, really quickly on a weekly chart? Well, what's the largest spread week? I've marked a number one. Here it is. It was the largest spread was a red week and it closed at the bottom of the range, which is a negative. The biggest volume week happened to be the exact same week and I've marked it on the chart. So you have another big red week of, of above average volume, another negative. And then the weeks at the bottom of the base. You can see these two weeks at the bottom of this flat base. Again, you have a big red volume, red week, followed by a blue week on very low volume. Again, so that's not a great sign. So generally, in a quick summary, you'd say this is not a healthy base, it's under distribution. And indeed, this flat base on a daily chart, it broke out, didn't get very far, um, tried to re-break out, and then it completely broke down as we started the bear market in late 2018. So here's the third um, what I wanted to show you. And this is the hack saying, what does the stock do the first three weeks off the bottom of the base? Now I will note in this red note here, this is probably not gonna be very helpful to you when you have stocks, growth stocks that are off 50 to 80%. Um, the concept is we wanna see in the first three weeks off the bottom, the stock to get in the upper half of a base. Now that's typically looking at bases that are 20, 25, maybe 30% deep. So you're not probably gonna get in the upper half of a base coming off the bottom when you're off 50 to 80%. So this probably is not gonna be helpful, but I'll show you how it works. Here's a base, 31% deep. Here's the, bot the bottom of the base. Then we have the first three weeks off the bottom here in blue, but you'll notice that they're still below the midpoint of this base. That's a clue that this is a weaker basing structure. The second example shows you a cup-shaped base, and you'll notice that the first three weeks off the bottom have gotten you into the upper half of the depth of this cup. That's a positive. Shows you probably some strong accumulation on the right side of the base. And the third example, again, shows three powerful weeks off the bottom, and they have peak closes or very close to peak closes. Again, a positive sign to get in the upper half of the structure. So that's something you can use more during normal uh, bull markets. Um, like I said, not probably that helpful when you have um, very, very deep bases. So I wanna get into some watch list ideas to spend the bulk of our time today. So as a quick summary, I've shared this slide before. You know, we are in a situation where growth stocks are off, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70%. Um, so, there's going to be overhead supply on the left side of the base, but you'll notice that the stocks come off this deep. You know, we want to see a prior uptrend, and I can't stress that enough. You want to see a prior uptrend 
um, of at least 25% coming off its lows before it tries to move sideways and actually form a base. It's really, really important to big winners um, and it's a characteristic to help you stay with the right stocks on your watch list. If you're fortunate enough to find a stock that only corrected 20 to 30%, that's just a really more positive situation because the stock is you know, not that far off of all time highs and there's less overhead resistance. So building watch lists, I've shared the slide before. Now I wanted to reference you to the May 28th video where I went into some market cycles of finding big leaders and I, and I go over the concept of growth stocks that don't make new lows when the market makes a new low. If you go to that video and you go to the seven minute 40 second mark and through the 16 minute mark, I would really refresh yourself with that video because it's an important concept. The other thing we're looking for, we want to have our watch list with stocks with good earnings and good sales and something new. It's a key canceling characteristic, a product or a service. And it's really the story about the stock. And I'm going to spend some time about story because it's important. You know, when you're a position trader, you haven't probably doing a whole lot of trading right now. So you have uh, probably have some time on your hands and you should be creating watch lists but this is a time period where you should be doing your research into the story. What is going to drive this particular stock on your watch list if the market turns? So we wanna look at estimates and I'm gonna show you examples of what I look when I'm trying to break down a stock. Again, we talked about we prefer names over the 50 day and within 30 to 35% of old highs. We want bases that are showing accumulation. And I mentioned here, all of these signs, details on the chart where you can see if a stock is under accumulation and you should run your screen and watch the charts to see if you can spot these. If they're not showing these characteristics, they definitely should be on the lower half of your watch list and maybe be eliminated from your watch list. So the first stock I wanted to show is Halazon, Halo. Um, you know, this is a stock that has really held up well during the bear market and I've highlighted this in yellow I've highlighted from the, where the market topped, the S&P topped, and you'll notice that it's hardly recognizable that Halo is in a bear market. Look at the relative strength on this stock in this yellow zone. It's a superior relative strength. The stock had tight closes at the bottom, and it's really come up the right side of a very, very large kind of cup pattern. You'll notice you can also read the chart to show it came off the lows and it formed this flat base of about five weeks. I'm going to break down the details of this on a daily chart. And I will disclose, I do have a position in Halo. The other one I wanted to show is Shockwave. This is another young growth stock. And you'll notice that it corrected with the market, came down, formed a bottom. And then as the market made new lows, Look at Shockwave, it came up the right side and tried to form a cup. Then the market made its second leg down and you'll notice that it dragged Shockwave down as well. But it also came right into this 140 level, which I've marked on the chart, which generally, which was where the support level came in from the previous cup. And you'll notice this big shakeout week with some of the biggest volume in its history and it closes at the absolute peak of the range. That's noteworthy to show that there's definitely support of an institution at this 140 level once, twice. And I've drawn the line all the way across this weekly chart to show that that was the top of a previous base in this chart. That's noteworthy. So let's break down Halo a little further. Now I'm moving into a daily chart and I have these colored zones because I'm trying to evaluate you know, when the index makes a new low and I've got this new low marked with a red dot, what is Halo doing? Well, in this magenta zone, the index makes a low, Halo makes a low. Then the market um, comes down and makes another new low, but you'll notice Halo does not make a new low at this point. And when the pressure came off the market in March, when we had that rally here, you'll notice that Halo um, really exploded higher. Again, it's showing relative strength very early on in March, but the general market is weighing it down. Then you'll notice the market 
above here is starting to grind its way down and it grinds its way down to another new low. Well, what was Halo done, doing? It actually had corrected and it corrected here from 44 and changed down to 37. But then we start, the stock starts to turn around. We get blue spikes in volume, very positive volume profile. And the stock makes a nice run up. And this becomes the prior uptrend that we're looking for. And it's a prior uptrend of about 31%. As the market makes new low, you'll notice as the market is struggling here and makes another new low, Halo is dragged down, but it starts to form a flat base. This flat base is you know, constructive. And I've shown that green zone where it's showing extreme relative strength. These blue dots are peaks in relative strength. One, two, three new highs in relative strength as the market is still declining. Now this is a subtlety, but I'll show it to you. Each 50 day undercut is less. You can see here that the, the, the stock comes down, undercuts the 50 day by a certain percent. The second pullback for the 50 day only undercuts the 50 day by a little bit. And this third actually touches the 50 day and doesn't even undercut. That's another clue that institutions are stepping in with demand for this stock. It's less selling going on in the stock and more accumulation. And we had some very, very powerful days here where the stock broke out of its flat base and it pulled back because um, the market is still kind of going sideways trying to find its footing. Um, but even the pullback, you'll notice that the, the, the red days are much less volume than these overwhelming blue days. It's just a really, really positive profile. Now, what's going on? This is the important part, the story. What's going on with this stock? Because it's certainly resisting the bear market. Well, Halo has a unique new enzyme. And this enzyme is technology that allows drugs to be delivered um, via IV in minutes versus um, sometimes six to eight hours. So it's really a new product, a new delivery system that is really helping to change in terms of how drugs are administered. They put, what they do is they partner with new um, emerging drugs that companies have been developing. And they try to look at opportunities to work in this new drug delivery system. Um, and the way the company makes money, it gets milestone payments from these partnership companies that they work with, and they get royalties and the royalties can extend for five to 10 years. So the, the story is there's projected growth of these milestones and royalties with this company in the future. They just recently are working on two drugs. Janssen has a drug and Genentech has a drug that are very close to being approved with this delivery system. Um, if you look at some of the numbers in MarketSmith, they have a higher tax burden in 22. So the 22 numbers are a little bit less than we'd like to see. But 2023 is forecast to be very strong growth for this company. So knowing this story and then correlating with that Maybe that's why the stock is resisting the bear market. And maybe if we get a bull market to start, this could be a leader. Let's move on and break down Shockwave. Similar concept, we're looking at, um, we mentioned how it was showing relative strength. We have a prior uptrend here from 125, the stock runs up to 223, a significant prior uptrend. And then the stock starts to form a base. Now it's not a perfect base, um, but it's showing some really positive characteristics. Um, the first characteristics when I break on this chart is I look at this and I've talked about shakeouts um, and most recently at the San Francisco meetup, you can see the sharp shake down, it undercuts the low at 125, but immediately reverses higher and you get this V formation with big volume. That's constructive at the low of the base. Then you'll notice the stock starts to move sideways and it starts to um, get some tight closes and you'll see the support coming in, support at the uh, 10 day moving average. And it has some nice support again around the 10 day moving average. And one of the days comes in with big blue volume. Then we have a nice constructive accumulation day with a gap up in the base. That's another positive characteristic from the list that I showed you about accumulation. Then the stock as the market comes back in 
sharply in late June, you'll notice that it dragged down shockwave. But we get basically another shakeout at the 50-day moving average, sharp undercut. And then look at the recovery of this undercut of the 50. This is important. We get four days in a row where we're um, up on volume. Now, the concept is, as we had the shakeout, and so there was obviously some institutions selling and getting out of the stock, and you'll say, but geez, John, these, these four days up are on really low volume. And the concept is the stock was being absorbed by an institution. Whoever was the seller, it was being, being absorbed by a buyer on that shakeout. And Bill O'Neill would always use these symbols, which stand for heavy volume without further price progress down. So you notice that this day right here is very heavy volume in the stock and the stock closed just a little bit higher. That's somebody absorbing those sellers on the left side of this V. And then it, after the seller is gone, it only takes a little bit of buying power to push that stock up strongly. So you'll notice this run up is really good. It's a 29% run up. And what's probably more important is the stock gives very little back. The stock in this green zone essentially goes sideways and it's starting to hold the moving average. And you'll notice blue spikes are starting to dominate the chart. All very, very constructive. Um, the stock actually had a, a little breakout here on Friday. The downside with this stock that I, that I think is downside, it's pretty volatile stock. So it's, you have to be prepared for volatility if you're gonna get involved in the stock. But let's look at why this stock might be one of the next leaders. Let's look at the story. The story is they have a technology of using sonic pressure waves to basically break up calcified arteries. And they have a basically something new that's important in the story. This um, sonic wave technique, studies have shown it outperforms stents and balloons in arteries over studies from a 30, um, from a 30 day period to two years period, these shockwave techniques are outperforming. 2021 was important for the company. They just got approved for using coronary applications. And what that does is it opens up a totally addressable market of 8.5 billion. It just entered the UK, France and Japan and limited use in China. But probably the most important thing I like about this situation story is they have no competitors. That is significant. If you remember a stock like US, um, excuse me, Intuitive Surgical, which had the Da Vinci robotic surgery system, they had no competitors initially. And 2004 went launched on a very large run. The 2023 forecast is for 47% growth. If you look at the numbers, they have triple digit earnings and sales and funds have been accumulating the stock for three quarters in a row. These are all incredibly powerful statistics that go along with the chart, matching it with a good story. Celsius is another stock that's been acting very, very well. And I've marked on the chart, I won't go over it in great detail, but the red is essentially where the index makes a low, Celsius makes a low. All of a sudden the index makes a low in this green zone, Celsius does not make a new low. Noteworthy. Then the index would make another low. Celsius um, has a V shake out. You can see this kind of climactic selling volume. And then we get two big blue days showing huge uh, accumulation. Then I've marked on the chart again that the index continues to make lows. Celsius does not make new lows, start to form a small basing structure in here after the run-up, the prior uptrend, and the RS line is incredibly strong. So this is another stock that's strong. And look at the blue spikes. Those are big institutional buyers that are revealing to you they're accumulating the stock. The story is, is also key. This is a huge mass market. They make energy drinks for pre-workout, post-workout that um, boost your metabolism. Um, one of their Key elements is no preservatives, aspartame, high fructose syrup. But I will warn you, there is a class action suit um, about citric acid being, quote, a preservative. So there is some risk in this stock. It is rapidly expanding its distribution channels globally. 
And if you remember, stocks like this, energy drinks, Monster Beverage had a huge run in the 2000s. And if you've been in the market a long time in the early 90s, Snapple was a big um, iced tea drink play. Um, the 2020 earnings growth is 800%. That's a huge number. And 2023 forecast is another 120% growth. That is rare in the market. We've got triple digit earnings and sales. And we have a low float, only 33 million, but it's also very liquid. This stock trades approximately $125 million in its average daily dollar volume. So that liquidity is enough for institutions to be able to buy the stock and, and create accumulation of a position. The fact that it has a low flow means this stock can really move if institutions start to um, create demand. Two other stocks on my watch list. This is Lee Auto, probably one of the strongest stocks in the last month and a half. Um, seems to be forming almost a high tech flag. Um, the flag calls 120% in seven weeks, and it's been digesting that. Um, that flag portion of this is about a 13% correction in three weeks, fitting the definition of a high tide flag. And if you look at a longer term chart, this is a larger basing structure. So that is very much on my watch list. I disclose that I have a position in REIT. Another one that looks interesting to me is Bumble. Um, again, prior uptrend, and basically the stock doubled from 17 to 34. And since then, it's going sideways and it's remaining fairly tight with good price and volume. There's a story behind Bumble. You should check into it. We don't have time for it now, but um, some more stocks you want to uh, um, you know, look at on your watch list. And the story component is how you prioritize your watch list. Which stocks have a great new product or a new service? If they don't have it, um, that stock probably moves lower and lower on my watch list and maybe gets eliminated from the watch list. So the point is the market's at a crossroads. It's not a time to be totally aggressive, uh, but we need to be prepared. There's great opportunities on the other side of a bear market. We know the market is looking out four to six months ahead. It's gonna to react to things that we don't see. And I put this chart up. This is actually the, um, the ARC technology uh, ETF divided by the S&P ETF. And you'll notice that this chart is showing that um, you know, the arc has moved sideways over the last two months and is actually starting to make lower lows and broke this long term downtrend. So maybe that's an indication that growth is starting to bottom out and going sideways and maybe it'll turn up. Um, we have to stay on our toes and that's why you need to keep your watch list up to date and prioritize because you're looking for the best stocks with good services, good new products, and good charts showing accumulation. So I do think the earnings reactions to growth stocks is to be watched carefully for sentiment. If you find growth stocks that are going down on a really poor earnings report, the market then is still not, is still discounting that stock. It's um, not a positive situation. But if you find growth stocks that stop going down on a really poor, crappy earnings report, it's a clue that maybe the worst is behind that stock and institutions are starting to look forward um, towards the next bull market and they're starting to accumulate stock. That itself is not a buy signal, but it's an important clue to understand if your watch list stocks um, are really, really quality or not. So that's a lot for this week. Um, join me on Twitter. Please give me comments on the YouTube. Uh, I wish everybody a great weekend, and we'll see you on the next general market update.